Give us your analysis of last night. Well, Nikki Haley was clearly on the rise because if she wasn't, they wouldn't have focused on her. And the fact is all the attacks really didn't lay a glove. The most recent polling that came out today now puts Haley in second place by a narrow margin in New Hampshire. No one talks about you unless you matter. And clearly she matters a lot. For Ron DeSantis, he's got a problem. He continues to drop nation nationwide and in Iowa, New Hampshire. And at a certain point, even he who has more money than God, even that money starts to dry up. And for Chris Christie, which we haven't talked about, he really had the best debate performance last night. But you notice that he's not on your photographs right there because Christie has been trailing in the polls. If he could have other presentations like this, I'm convinced that he is still viable and that you have to watch what Chris Christie does in New Hampshire. The one candidate that has refused to appear, Donald Trump, it makes sense. If you're going through 91 different counts, 91 indictments, you don't want to put yourself up on stage, particularly against Governor Christie. And finally, the overall winner is Joe Biden, because as Republicans tear themselves apart in the House, in the Senate, and even now in the presidential race, the winner by technical knockout are the Democrats. Do you believe, like some, Frank, that Chris Christie may have a deal or at least a wink uh, with Nikki Haley to come to her defense to triangulate here and maybe leave the race in time for her to dominate New Hampshire? Or am I going too far? You're going too far. I've known Chris Christie you now sure seemed for... to be a friend of her last night. Well, that's because everyone else seemed to be an enemy of hers, and they're making a mistake. Voters don't like it. Republican voters hate when candidates go at each other. I know that Trump does it, and it's why Donald Trump has such a, a level of support. But Nikki Haley has been rising every week, every month, because of her debate performances. You have two candidates that are clear alternatives to Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, and I'm going to surprise you, Chris Christie. Vivek Ramaswamy, his negatives are skyrocketing. He is the most articulate of the bunch. But the message that he delivers again and again he attacks the people to his left. He attacks the people to his right. And he's been doing it in a way that's turning voters off. Vivek is the closest thing to Andrew Yang on the Democratic mm. side who ran eight years ago. Yang was very popular because he appealed to young voters. But if you're over age 30, you just didn't get it. Vivek Ramaswamy appeals to libertarians within the Republican Party. But if you're over age 40, that's not what you're looking for. What did you make of Vivek Ramaswamy talking about conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. theories when it comes to 9-11 and some of that getting a lot of applause from the audience last night? Well, he's trying to go after the Trump vote and he's doing quite a good job at that. So his hope is that if Donald Trump, for some reason, should be unable to make this race, that all those people come to him. My response is that may work in a, in fact, it will work in a Republican primary but it will not work in a general election. And if I can offer one piece of insight, which I've not said until now, voters forget that in New Hampshire, independents can vote. It was independents that gave John McCain the nomination in uh, 2008. It was independents who, who uh, preferred Bill Clinton over his opponents. Those independents have no one to vote for in the Democratic primary. And I believe the independent vote is significant. Ramaswamy has turned them off with his neg negativity. It's why you cannot count out Chris Christie in New Hampshire, because these are people who have not embraced Donald Trump. They have not embraced Joe Biden, and they're looking for an alternative. Well, so let me just take that a step further from where Anne-Marie uh, started with those conspiratorial remarks from Vivek Ramaswamy. Guys, she ran through January 6, 9-11, uh, every uh, modern election before he was cut off by the moderators. He was applauded for that, Frank. At that same debate on the same stage, Chris Christie was booed for suggesting that Donald Trump could be convicted of a crime before the election. What a contrast for those two moments to exist in the same moment. What does it say about the state of the Republican Party? Well, I'm glad that you raised it because I've never seen the Republic. I've been a professional of this since uh, 19, really 1990. 
I was involved in 92, 93, 94, the contract with America. I remember when Newt Gingrich mm -hmm. was the Republicans' cup of tea, and I've been working through this now for 30 years. I've never seen the GOP so divided. I never see them destroy one another. And that is the effort. On the Senate side, they don't talk to each other. On the House side, they toss each other out. And in the presidency, it really is significant that the real opponent is Donald Trump, and yet the candidates ended up, for the most part, attacking each other. It's why Trump has this tremendous lead right now. But if you're a betting person or you're a finance person and you're trying to figure out who you go to that has Trump's policies but not his persona, then you got to look at either Nikki Haley or Chris Christie. You just mentioned Republicans in the House tossing each other out. I, I'm thinking of your friend, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who wrote an op-ed this week, yesterday, in the Wall Street Journal, saying that at the end of the year he's going to retire, he has other passions he wants to work on. What, what do you expect him to do? Well, I know this because I've been working in the corporate world now for a long time, that McCarthy is going to be probably the number one most in-demand speaker without Speaker of the House, dinner speaker. So I expect him to, to make the so-called rubber chicken circuit. <clears throat> and the other thing about him is that he really has the personality of someone who tries to bring people together. Speaker McCarthy had the ability to sit with Democrats, to sit with the Republicans, conservatives, and those on the more progressive side. And I'm hoping that he's going to play an essential role at speaking to everyone, at finding some sort of common ground. And I think there's nobody like him who really approaches his leadership, in a sense, as a happy warrior, someone who smiles a lot. These are not great pictures of him. There you go. Oh, it's a little bit better. I'm glad I can. <laughs> What's on camera? That's, there we go. That's Getting closer to a is. smile here. And it's who he is as a person and with our politics right now. And I've said this on your show <clears throat> Quite often, I am afraid of the future, the negativity, the meanness, the incivility, the indecency is out of control. And I know most of your viewers feel that way. We need someone like Kevin McCarthy on the outside speaking up to those on the inside saying enough is enough. He's the perfect guy to do it.